Welcome to this edition of Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock. Our executive roundtable, it is here for our State of the State 2019. I want to thank our guests for being here today. We have Randy Zook, who is the CEO of the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. Mervyn Jebaraj, economist and director of the University of Arkansas Center for Business and Economic Research at the Walton College of Business and go. Intergy Arkansas CEO, Laura Landro. Thank you all for being here. You need a longer title if you're going to keep up with these guys. <laughs> right. I mean, come on. There's an inverse relationship between <laughs> the length of title and the real authority and power. Of the I understand. That's so right. the shorter the title, the more influential you are. Exactly. All right. I'm just Roby Brock host. So uh, right now. Oh, well, there are I'm, exceptions. That's right. All right, let's begin with um, 2018. I want to put some things in perspective here. Uh, we had low unemployment. Uh, we had the tariff and trade wars that were out there. There was the tax cut stimulus. So there were some good, there was some bad in 2018. Randy, I'll let you cue it off first because we always will put age before beauty on this set. So um, was 2018 a good year or a bad year for the economy? 2018 was a really good year, maybe one of the best ever with a few exceptions in Arkansas. Just about every sector had a good, strong, uh, robust year of growth increases. We've got pressures within the economy though as a result, but on balance, it was a good year. Now the ag sector, toughest hit, hardest uh, hardest uh, impact. Well, that is the biggest <clears throat> industry sector in Arkansas. So if you're but saying it, Arkansas had a great year in agriculture, the biggest uh, but the most segment people, of our economy. The most people are not affected directly by agriculture, like manufacturing or retail or utilities or any of the other major sectors of the economy. It was a very good year. You know, incomes were up, uh, tax collections were up. So uh, all those things indicate good economic growth. Consumer spending good too. Mervyn, what do you think? I think if you look at most of the headline statistics for Arkansas in 2018, they were all pretty good indicators. You look at the unemployment rate, some of the lowest rates we've seen on record. Uh, but if you try to peel back through the layers of some of those statistics, you'll see that you know the unemployment rate was low in part because uh, people were leaving the labor force, not because people were joining the labor force and finding work, it's because people were leaving the labor force. Now, if they're leaving because they're retiring, that's great. If they're leaving because they're in college, that's great. But what we find is a lot of people between 25 and 54 that should be in the labor force that are not in the labor force. So of all the regions of Arkansas, only Northwest Arkansas, Central Arkansas, and Jonesboro added people to the labor force. Uh, during 2018, and the rest of the region seemed to be losing people. Where do from you the think people force. are going? Where is that 25 to 54 age group? Where are they drifting off to? Are they moving out of state? Are they sitting in their parents' basement? What are they doing? Well, I think the speculation is that they're all playing Fortnite at home, but I don't know that it's <laughs> necessarily <laughs> that. I think uh, what you are finding is that you know there's been a recent report to show that about since 1999, Arkansas lost about 43,000 people from the labor force largely due to the opioid crisis. So there are some larger trends that are affecting uh, labor force participation rate that we haven't done anything about. Laura, how was 2018 for the energy sector and Intergy in particular? Well, you mentioned tax cuts and uh, for our customers, 2018 was a really good year because we had the opportunity to pass on to our customers in 2018 and continue into 2019, the effects of the corporate tax rate going from 35% uh, to 21%. That was a total of $466 million that we've returned to customers. On average, residential customers experienced about a $20 reduction on their bill. So the customers had a really good year. Did all of that go to uh, back to your customers or did some of it go into some capital investment and capital expenditures? All of the money was returned to customers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are you, when are you gonna make some more investments in, in 2019 and beyond? I know you guys have mentioned that uh, there's gonna be a retiring of some plants if you get it through the PSC. Mm -hmm. um, tell me maybe how that decision came to a conclusion in 2018 to set you guys up. Well, uh, uh, we've, you're speaking of the coal plants. Yes. Yeah, we've, um, we've announced that we will be uh, ceasing to burn coal at our two coal plants, White Bluff and Independence, um, in 2028 and 2030. So that's uh, some time off, which gives us a, a great deal of time to plan for the next generation of, uh, of resources after that. Um, that came to fruition um, in part with working with the Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality on the state implementation plan which resulted in the decision to cease to burn coal at uh, White Bluff. Um, at that time, the plant will be about 50 years old. 
and uh, reaching near the end of its useful life to continue to operate those plants past that time likely would have required that we invest in about $2 billion worth of environmental controls. So we think this is in the best interest of our customers to start planning now for uh, the retirement of those units and planning for more efficient generation. Randy would have taken $2 billion of investment in the Arkansas economy, but I know you guys will be doing some investment. There's, let's look to 2019 in terms of what's on the short-term horizon here. Uh, we have divided government in Washington, D.C. Um, the government shutdown, as we're speaking, uh, is still intact. Probably going to be some easing on interest rate hikes this year. We just heard from the St. Louis Fed chief uh, in early January on that. And there are some expectations for a global economic slowdown. Mervyn, I'll come to you first. Are you worried about where we're about to go into in terms of the economy? I think if we manage to keep all the macroeconomic factors that we have today in place, we'll probably be fine through 2019. But that doesn't take into account uh, we kind of have a ceasefire right now in all our trade wars that we've started, but it could at any time start back up, and I think that is a big concern going forward. It does look like the Federal Reserve maybe will just do one rate increase as opposed to three that they had thought about, although they're kind of saying two right now, but most people think it'll be one. James so. Bullard saying zero yeah. is what he's saying. I so when he was in Blue Rock. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Randy? What do you think is kind of on the short-term horizon in terms of the the factors that I just outlined right there, and are you nervous about where we're heading? You know, I'm not nervous, but concerned about some of the pressures in the economy. Mervyn has touched on them, uh, but specific companies are having very tough times finding the talent that they need. That's the, that's the most frequent uh, concern I hear from business leaders is I just can't find the people I need to do the work I already have in hand, much less to expand. And that, you know, that doesn't even address any of the expansion or new opportunities that might come along. Is this so, more in manufacturing, small business? It's across um, the board. Healthcare, small business, retail, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing, transportation. You know, we're, we're screaming for truck drivers all over the state uh, and all over the country for that matter. Uh, so it's not just an Arkansas problem. It, it continues to be a national challenge to have enough talent in the right places. Laura, do you see that in the utility sector? Does that happen in there? Well, a not labor necessarily. Shortage or labor problem? We certainly have a workforce development challenge uh, going forward, similar to the manufacturing industry and, and the electric industry. But in terms of, uh, of the impacts that, that Randy was just talking about, you know, we have to be mindful. These are our customers that are being impacted. These are our industrial, commercial customers that are have these pressures at their fingertips. So it's you know our duty to continue to keep a close eye on our rates to make sure that Arkansas remains competitive from electric rate perspective. Right now we have rates that are below the national and regional average mm -hmm. and we just want to keep it that way to keep Arkansas a competitive place to do business. Tell me what's going to gin business in 2019 and going into 2020 for you. If you, if you could set a set of circumstances in the economic climate that are going to be good for growth for you guys, people using more energy but not requiring maybe more plants to come on board. Right. Well, one of, one of the things that we're looking at for economic growth is, is positioning Arkansas to be an attractive place to do business, and we're working with our communities to set ourselves up to do that. We have a program that our economic development department, led by Danny Games, that's, that's putting out right now. That program is called Select Sites. So we're working with our communities to identify prospective sites so that um, high-tech or manufacturing or distribution plants that are ready to come look at Arkansas as a place to do business, that we have sites that are shovel ready when they, when they come knocking on our door. So we're looking at, uh, we have four sites right now that we've certified as shovel ready. Um, that's in West Memphis, Russellville, Little Rock, and Newport. And so in 2019, we look to increase that number uh, to continue to make our communities that we serve a more viable place to do business. These would be big industrial clients big industrial. that you're talking about in terms of shovel ready. Uh, do you think, Randy, do you think that this is a, there's an opportunity for Arkansas's economy to move on these big projects, or do you think that it is going to be incremental increases that we see? Well, most of your employment growth typically will come from expansions of existing businesses. But Laura's right, we have got to be prepared to compete for the, for the big opportunities that present themselves, and we have been woefully unprepared in years past. Their, their program is a great step forward. Why and have we been unprepared in the past? There's been a well, lot of emphasis on economic development from both Governors Beebe and, and Governor Hutchinson. This, it's not like we haven't been had or known that this was a problem. 
Well, you've got, to, to Laura's point, you've got to be shovel ready. That means you've got either title or a solid option at a fixed price so that there's no arguing over the making the land available, making the site available, making the infrastructure available, sewer systems, roads, water lines, electric lines, all of those things have got to be ready because other states, frankly, have, have, have just outpaced us in being better prepared. Plug and play, you know, uh, build buildings, uh, build schools, build roads, uh, welcome to Texas, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, Alabama, other states have just been much more aggressive in their, their uh, preparation than we have. Irvin, you and I talk about the haves and the have-nots, the, the three areas of the state that have seen the biggest kind of economic growth, and then there's a lot of areas of the state that haven't seen a lot of economic growth. Can Arkansas do some things over the next year or two years that are going to move this needle in a big, dramatic way, or do you think it's just incremental movement that we will see in terms of improving economic statistics? Well, I think, you know, both of you have pointed out, you know, in terms of moving those big projects that either bring companies here or expand the ones that we have, one of the biggest challenges they have is really it's not even a case of incentives or tax policy. It's mostly workforce development. And so we do not have the workforce in the state, especially in those regions that are struggling. Well, what can we do to change that? I know and, Randy's you know, worked on that right. a lot, and Laura has And so to. Arkansas still has one of the lowest educational attainment rates, whether you're looking at high school degrees or you know lower than most other states. And when you look at college degrees in particular, we're at 22% is one of the lowest in the entire country. So those are areas we really need to address. So it's not, just not sufficient to have a high school degree anymore. They either need to go to community college, get vocational training, or get a four-year degree. Uh, for companies to be able to hire these people. And so I think you're going to have to see a lot more investment from the state on education um, all the way from pre-K through uh, four-year colleges for this to change. I'm not going to let you miss an opportunity to talk about workforce, Randy. <laughs> so well, I mean, what, what can we do to move this in a major way to make sure that these unfilled positions that you've talked about get filled? We've got to make sure that we have a robust post-secondary education and preparation system. And we have a system that that could stand a lot of tuning up. It's just that simple. I, I, I want to be sure, though, to, to mention that we're taking steps. It's just that they're baby steps. We need to take some giant steps. We need to invest a lot more in our post-secondary education and training systems. Is we're it a lack of money? Lack, it's always a lack of money, but it's also a lack of will. Uh, you, you've got to have leadership at a local level that says, hey, we've got to get better and we need to get better in a hurry. And that starts, as Mervyn mentioned, in pre-K. It's pre-K through jobs now, whether it's post-secondary uh, certification or a four-year degree or a two-year program or a one-year training or education prep program. So there's huge opportunities, big upsides. Uh, we're moving in the right direction, but we need to step on the gas. Laura, is this a private industry needs to come to the table and help more on this, or is this something that it should be more of a government function? Oh, I think it's got to be a partnership between both to, yeah. to make it effective. Um, we've got to have investment in the business community, and we've got to have investment at the local level as well if we want to have a winning formula. That's uh, part of the good news is that business and industry is recognizing that they've got to step up. Mm -hmm. We can't just wait for government or the education system. We've got to invest, and companies are, like Entergy, mm -hmm. Tyson, just go around the state. All the major, uh, especially industrial and healthcare institutions, are, are doing what they can and more. Uh, Randy, let's stick with you on this. Uh, with the legislative session uh, has, is about to begin. Um, going to be a lot of things on the agenda up there, but particularly tax cuts mm -hmm. are one thing I want to hear your perspective on it's going to happen, but what is going to happen? Well, frankly, that's still unclear. As you know, as we're, as we're speaking, there's some, there's some uh, fine tuning going on in how to, how to set the rates, how to, how to set the brackets, how to ensure that the governor, uh, as he promised, uh, delivers for everybody, for all taxpayers across the, the full range. And there, there's, some still, there's still some work going on. The, the tax reform committee that worked uh, did exceptional work. Uh, led by Senator Hendron and Representative Lane Jean, and they both just did a great job of steering that. It now, helped to build some consensus, yes. but there still is not total consensus. Well, it's, it's complex. It's very complex. I mean, when you talk about, uh, you know, a million, what is it, three million people and probably a million, three hundred or four hundred thousand, I'm not sure what the exact number is for taxpayers, but that's a whole lot of returns to make sure that everybody 
uh, comes out on the right side of that deal. So yeah. there's work to be done and also work on the corporate side as well. Yeah. Mervin, what do you think that the a benefit will be of this really upper tax bracket reduction? Yeah, you know, I, I think it only helps on the margins. I don't think it's necessarily keeping a whole lot of people from moving to the state. You know, the regions that are growing, Central Arkansas, Jonesboro, Northwest Arkansas especially, in places like Northwest Arkansas, about 70% of the population grow. There's people moving into there, so tax policy isn't what's holding them back. I think it's the lack of jobs and workforce training is what's holding different parts of Arkansas back. Agree, disagree, Laura? No, I agree. I think both of them make really good points about that. Yeah. <clears throat> what do tax cuts do in terms of helping your customer base? And if there are corporate tax cuts, what would be beneficial for Entergy? Well, I mean, corporate tax cuts for us will always be passed on to our customers. We collect uh, our tax payments. You're kind of mandated to do that, We aren't are you? mandated <laughs> to do that, so it's always in the best interest. But, you know, anything we can do to continue to find lower cost options for our customers helps the economy. It helps our low-income customers pay their monthly bill. So, um, Let's talk about um, energy drives commerce. I think that a lot of people would agree with that. You've got to have energy to run these factories. You've got to have energy to run neighborhoods and communities. Low cost and reliable. Low cost and reliable. So we're going to see more trees trimmed is what you're saying. That's right. All right. Um, there has been a big renewable energy push in recent years. What, what are your expectations for where renewable energy is going to go and how that could be an economic development driver? Well, um, if you look at our industry across the, the country, the planned generation over the next three years is over half renewable right now. You're not seeing any new nuclear, you're not seeing any new coal, um, you're seeing a lot of solar and wind, and Arkansas is no different. Um, in June of last year, we started taking output from our first solar plant, an 81 megawatt facility in Stuttgart. And in 2019, we're breaking ground on a 100 megawatt facility in Lake Village. And in 2019, we will continue to look at uh, economic renewable options for our customers to, as you said, look at, um, you know, continuing to replace our aging fleet. And, that, and that's because the technology is bringing the cost of that down. It used to not be cost effective. It the, had to be subsidized. It had to be uh, granted almost to, and there to are make still, it work. There are still tax credits, but the cost of the renewable energy has come down such that it is now economic as compared to other options. Randy, I didn't ask you about tort reform. Uh, this was knocked I wish off. You wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> this was knocked off the ballot in 2018, but there could be, and I have heard that there are conversations that, perhaps, for the business community, this is another opportunity to look at that. Do you think that there will be another effort made at tort reform? I think it's likely. You know, we're it's early days yet, and we're still trying to figure out a good strategy and what makes sense and what how should we go about it. So the details are. Uh, in the planning, but uh, yeah, I think it's likely that we'll continue to push on a, on a very important issue where we're out of step with most of the rest of the country and especially the region. We just, we need to to uh, address that. Mervyn, you get the vaguest last question of the round table here. What happens in 2019 that we're not expecting to happen? Well, I think uh, if we knew that, we'd all be betting on the <laughs> stock market and not uh, talking about it here. What should we um, be watching out for? But I think, you know, we've seen, uh, maybe without a lot of detail, some positive talk about the talks with China going on on our trade uh, front right now. There is a moratorium and additional tariffs right now. Uh, I do hope that uh, both sides are able to reach some understanding and back off the tariffs that we have. Uh, with China, and we don't escalate to a 25 percent because I think that does pushes much close pushes them closer to a recession, <clears throat> pushes us closer to a recession as well. And then, just going forward, you know, we've imposed tariffs all of last year, and other people have imposed tariffs on us. We've stopped imposing new tariffs, but no one got rid of the tariffs that we set, and it's almost like we've forgotten the cost to business of you know a 25 percent tariff on steel and aluminum. We need to reverse all those things. If that happens, what happen? What, what do you see happening with GDP? If we go to a full-blown trade war with China, no, if oh, we without, back off, of the if we back the off, I do think that you know we'll get through 2019 and probably most of 2020 then without uh, much of an economic slowdown. Yep. All right, Randy, Mervin, Laura, thank you all very much for sharing your perspectives with us. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank all you. Right.